the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, Distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Henry Hazlitt, editor of the Freeman and contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Arthur Bliss Lane, former ambassador to Poland. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Lane, uh, our chronoscope audience remembers you for your appearance here last December, and we're very happy to welcome you back here tonight. Uh, since uh, that time, an investigation has been underway in Washington into the disappearance of 15,000 Polish officers, some 4,000 of whom were found murdered in the Katyn Forest in Russia. Now, uh, we'd like to get your views on that, uh, on that mass murder because you've been very active in trying to get the truth before the American public about it and what has happened and what has developed about it. Now, I'd like to begin first by asking you uh, when this murder occurred and what were the conditions under which it occurred? Well, in my opinion, Mr. Haslett, it occurred in April or May of 1940 when the Soviets were in charge in command of that district in Katyn, near Smolensk. Well, when, was it, when and how was it first brought out? It wasn't brought out until 1943, when the Nazis discovered the graves. And uh, that discovery brought about a great rupture of relations between the Polish government in London and between the Soviet government. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Lane, first, sir, why is it so enormously important in 1952 for us and for our government to go back and establish once and for all before the world the importance of this massacre. What's so important about the Katyn Forest Massacre? Well, Mr. Huey, if I may say so, first of all, I think it's most important that the people behind the Iron Curtain, and I refer not only to the Polish people and the Hungarians, but also the Russian people, should realize at last that the American people and their representatives are taking a very great interest in this case. But secondly, and perhaps most important, is to bring back home to the American people the importance of this, because it shows what Soviet criminal methods are. And, and that's why tonight that we are, we are discussing it, and that's why it's so important, is that it, it shows to the American people the nature of their enemy how the Russians were capable of murdering large numbers of, of Poles and then use, telling our people that somebody else did it. Exactly, because this isn't the only case we have. You see the, the case of the Ukrainians who were murdered at Vinitsa, many other cases of which perhaps we don't know nothing. Because there were 11,000 Polish officers who disappeared, we don't know their fate today. Well, what is the major evidence that the Russians did it? Well, first of all, the medical evidence, uh, the, the condition of the bodies. Uh, second, there's the, shall we call it, the agricultural evidence, the height of the saplings that were planted above the graves. Uh, third, the circumstantial evidence, the fact that on the, in the clothing were found documents that were not dated after April or May of 1940. But let me say... You mean that's before the, right, the, before the Germans yes, got in there? Yes, because I was just going to say, it, Mr. Hassan, that if the Germans had committed this crime, it would have had to be in August 41 or after. Yes. But fourth, there's the diplomatic evidence, which I think is extremely important. Uh, from 1941 until 1943, 
the Polish government in London had been trying to find out where these 15,000 Polish officers were. And even our ambassador was trying to find out because, of course, the United States was equally interested in setting up a Polish army in the Soviet Union. And what did they say? They'd gone to Franz Josef land, they'd gone to Manchuria, perhaps they'd gone back to Poland, perhaps they'd disappeared. And then when the Germans announced the finding of these graves, Pravda, the official organ of the Soviet government, says, oh, they were killed by the Germans while they were working on the roads near Smolensk in great coats in this August of 1941. I mean, the, the Russians had said that the crime was committed in August of 1941. Yes, by, by the And Germans. they were found in, in these coats, uh, uh, frozen in these coats with these great coats and so on. So That's it must right. have occurred then at least the prior winter. Well, uh, if I may that. say, it's, uh, to my mind, most ridiculous that the uh, Soviet secret police, which I consider as fairly efficient, should not detect the presence of 15,000 Polish officers in Polish uniforms near Smolensk for two years. Now, Mr. Lane, let's get this facts straight again, if we will. The Russians caught 15,000 Polish officers in 1940 and murdered them. Well, in 1939, now, as they entered that's uh, right, Poland, in 1939. Oh, probably now they many more, but th there were 15,000 that were known to exist in three camps. I see. Now, why did the Russians murder these 15,000 Polish officers? Well, in my opinion, it was for the purpose of stamping out the nucleus of the nationalism of Poland. All right, now were these officers intellectuals or were they scientists or what? Well, there were some who were members of the uh, Polish Army Corps, but there were many others who were intellectuals and scientists. In other words, I think that the Soviet policy is always to stamp out uh, the roots of intellectualism in every country. In other words, the roots of nationalism. And they, they were, in other words, they, they were taking over Poland and they were not going to have any trouble. They were going to avoid trouble in the future by killing these men then. Exactly, just as they did in 1944 as they exterminated the uh, and, and then, then when, in when, Warsaw. When the bodies were found, the Soviets said that the Germans had killed the people, didn't they? Exactly. And, so and then, and then our OWI and our government also told our people that the Germans killed them. That's didn't correct. They? That's well. Correct. That's what I'd like to get at, Mr. Yes. Lane. Why did our government put the blame on Germany instead of on Russia? And did our government know that Russia had done it? Well, now that's a very difficult question to answer. Why we did it? But I think it's pretty obvious from what's happened why we did it. We didn't do, our, our government did in fact do this. The OWI did in fact announce that the Germans had done it. They did. They swallowed the story of the Russians. And I per personally feel that our government felt that appeasement of the Soviet Union was the most important thing in our policy. That's confirmed by many events that have happened since then. Now, the OWI not only swallowed it, but the OWI told our people that the Germans did it, didn't they? And how late after the war with, was the OWI and many major American journals still telling our people that it was the work of the Germans? Well, I don't think it has really been denied up to this day by our government. Because, remember, at Nuremberg also, we gave the impression that the Russians were not responsible because the uh, indictment at Nuremberg against the Germans was just allowed to drop. And now, Mr. Lane, why is it so important now in 1952, why is it so important that our people understand this whole technique, this of lying technique on the part of the Russians? This, are things happening in Korea today that our people should know about? Well, in Korea today, a ghastly repetition of Katyn has taken place. I don't know the numbers, because the numbers have not been admitted by our government. Well, but there's certainly the hundreds of thousands. Yes. In the middle of last November, Colonel James Hanley revealed that 6,270 American prisoners of war have been murdered by the Chinese and North Korean communists. Now, what happened after his announcement? Uh, well, I don't want to comment on that, but let me say one thing, that the those boys were found in mass graves, just the way those Polish officers were found. And they were found with their hands tied behind their backs like this, and with bullets in the back of their necks. 
And that's the thing that I think the American people ought to realize today, that this isn't a matter that only concerns Poland or the Polish officers. It concerns the security of the United States. Well, hasn't this been minimized, these facts been minimized by the administration in dealing with the uh, Russian negotiations? Well, of course it has. Matter of fact, friends of mine in the State Department begged me not to take an interest in this Cartine matter. But fortunately, members of Congress have taken the matter up. And as, uh, they've made the, not only the Soviet government so angry, but also the Polish embassy so angry that vitriolic statements have emerged. And I'm glad to say that the State Department last Saturday came out and said that Poland today, the Polish embassy magazine was suspended because of the attacks that they made on the United States as a result of Katyn. And the Polish embassy had the temerity to say that the United States had murdered prisoners of war in Korea. Well, well now, sir, do you, is there some indication that our government, our State Department, is at last about ready to tell the people the truth about uh, this Soviet technique? Uh, Mr. Huey, after years of experience under the S Department of State as administered by Mr. Dean Atchison, I do not know what is going to happen. I see, sir. And I re refuse to make a prophecy. I'm sorry. Well, uh, Mr. Lane, I'm sure that our audience very much appreciates this very forthright message that you brought tonight, and thank you for being with us, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Henry Hazlitt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Arthur Bliss Lane, former ambassador to Poland. Now, suppose you said to your jeweler, show me, please, the best Longines watch you have. He would say, I have a wide selection of models to choose from. Choose the style you like best. The one you select is the best Longines watch of its type. Every Longines watch is a watch of the highest quality, correct in design, manufactured to the highest precision standard. Yes, every Longines watch is made to the unique Longines ideals of excellence. The ideals that have won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medal awards, highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories of the world, and a position of preference in fields of precise timing, aviation, sport, exploration, and science. So if you wish to buy just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world, either for yourself or as a gift for someone important to you, you may buy and own or buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for The Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watson. This is the CBS Television Network.